In grade 10, you learnt about a the graph of the quadratic function, and we're going to expand on what you learnt in grade 11. Okay, let's start off by revising. You learnt that the standard form of the um, parabola or the quadratic function is y is equal to ax squared plus q. The q has the effect of shifting the graph vertically. In other words, it shifts the graph up and down. If the q is positive, the graph will shift up by the value of q. And if the q is negative, the graph will shift down by the value of q. The a value determines the, the shape of the graph. So if the a value is positive, the graph will have a minimum turning point. In other words, it will turn at the bottom of its range. If the a value is negative, the graph will have a maximum turning point, which means that it will turn at the top of its range. We now introduce a new move into the parabola, and that is the horizontal shift. And the parameter that shifts the graph horizontally is the p-value. So we define a new standard form as being y is equal to a x minus p all squared plus q. If p is bigger than 0, in other words, if p is a positive number, then the graph will shift to the right by the value of p. If p is a negative number, if it's less than 0, then the graph will shift to the left by the value of p if the p-value is negative. When we shift a graph left and right, one of the features or, or some of the features associated with that graph also move. So the axis of symmetry of the graph is the vertical line that goes through the turning point through the halfway that cuts the graph in half. Now, if we're going to move the graph left and right, so if we just think about a graph that has its turning point at the origin. If we move it up or down, can you see that we don't change the axis of symmetry? The axis of symmetry is still the y-axis, which is the line x is equal to 0. But the moment we shift a graph left and right, so if we shift the graph over here, we're going to shift the axis of symmetry along with the graph, and we will shift it by whatever the p-value is. So the equation of the axis of symmetry is actually the line x equals p. In the same way, if we move the graph left and right and up and down, we also move the turning point, and the x-value of the turning point will be the p-value, and the y-value of the turning point will be the q-value. Okay, if we now have a look at the parent function y is equal to x squared, we can see that the graph has its turning point at the origin, and we can see that also from the equation, because this is y is equal to x minus 0 squared plus 0, so the p and the q value give us the turning point of 0 and 0. If we start to make changes to that parent graph, for example, if we have a look at the graph y is equal to 2x squared, we can see that what happens here is that the y values double. So the y value at 1 and 1 becomes 1 and 2. The y value at 2 and 4 will actually land up at um, 2 and 8. So the y value doubles, and that stretches the graph up. If we make the a value negative, as we said, it now has a maximum turning point instead of a minimum turning point. That also has the effect of reflecting the graph about the x-axis. And now if we have a look at a graph where we change the p and the q value, if we bear in mind that our standard form is x minus a x minus p all squared plus q, here we can see our a value is 1. Because we have x minus 2, it means that the value of p itself must have been a positive 2. And the q value is at 3. So the p value is positive 2 and the q value is positive 3. And we can see that that is exactly where our turning point of the graph is at 2 and 3. And if we have a look, we can see that all of the coordinates have moved 2 units right and 3 units up. That coordinate has moved 1, 2, 1, 2, 3 and landed up over there. 
This one here has moved one, two, one, two, three units up and has landed up over there. So the entire graph has actually been shifted two units to the right and three units up. Let's take a look at the standard forms of the equation of the parabola. We've already looked at the, the, the most straightforward one, which gives us the turning point. And if we knew the values of a, p, and q, and we multiplied that equation out, we would actually get a new standard form of the equation, or a different form of it, in the form y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, in the form y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, you can't see what the original p and q values are. They kind of get lost when you multiply them out. They're no longer distinct values. So you can't decide what the turning point of this graph will be. But the c value actually gives you the y-intercept of the graph. So that is the only parameter in this form of the equation that actually gives you a specific value on the graph. That is why we often work with this equation and multiply it out if we need it in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. And just as multiplying out is the one process, if we want to reverse the process, that would involve having to complete the square. So ax minus p all squared plus q is the completed square form of y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And if you would like to try on your own to complete the square of ax squared plus bx plus c using the uh, values of a, b, and c, that is what the completed square version of the equation will look like. And I will come back and talk about that in a bit more, t in a bit more detail just now. The third and final form of, this, of the parabola is the um, factorized form. And what the factorized form, if we multiply that out, we also get back to the ax squared plus bx plus c. And where the factorized form is useful is that these two values here are actually the x-intercepts of the function. Because when you find the x-intercepts, you let y equals to 0. And whatever the values are here, so if you had, say, x minus 2 and x minus 3, you would then say that your x-intercepts are positive 2 or x is positive 3. So those actual values there of positive 2 and positive 3 give you the x-intercepts of the graph. So if you are given the x-intercepts, it's easiest to substitute them into this form of the equation and then to multiply out to get the y equals ax squared plus bx plus c version. Now, if we just go back to this version over here, the completed square form of ax squared plus bx plus c, we know that the coordinates p and q give us the turning point of the graph. So if we look at this function here, and if we just renamed it in function notation, just to help ourselves a little bit, and if we th think of it in standard form, which is x minus p, so the p value itself must have been negative b over 2a in order to give us the positive in the middle. Okay, we can see here that this is in the place of the p value, and this is in the place of the q value. Now, this expression here is horrible to try and remember, but it's quite easy to remember negative b over 2a to actually learn that as a, as a value. So here, your turning point of the parabola when it's given in this format will be the value of negative b over 2a. And then if you want the y value, the easiest thing to do is just to substitute whatever you get as negative b over 2a back into the equation to find the f of negative b over 2a. And that will give you the coordinates of the turning point. So this is something that you need to learn off by heart so that you can use that in a test or exam. If you forget, it's not a big problem because all you need to do is complete the square to get from there to there. But obviously that involves quite a lot more work. So it's worth learning negative b over 2a as the x value of the turning point.